I'm feeling tired. My mom went and got me a vanilla latte from downstairs. So sleepy. It has just been, oh, it's been so crazy. I definitely had like a complete breakdown. So I am just starting off my birth vlog, baby boy's birth vlog. We got to Chandler Regional. Um, it's probably been almost an hour. I was supposed to check in at 10 p.m. for my induction. I don't know if you guys can hear baby's heartbeat in the back. Um, I have like a monitor on my belly so that his heartbeat is being monitored. Um, I basically was scheduled for an induction because I'm 41 weeks tomorrow and I still hadn't had any dilation or contractions, which apparently I actually am having some contractions because they're uh, monitoring that right now, but they are like so faint that I couldn't even really tell what they were. So, um, but basically, basically the problem is, is that I'm not dilating. So that is why I am here for an induction. This is not what I was wanting. I was really wanting to be able to have like a natural labor, but it just doesn't seem to be happening that way, which is kind of common for your first baby, I guess. So um, I'm here for my induction. I am waiting to hear from the doctor what she wants to do as far as far as like the first steps to starting um, to try to get some dilation going. So waiting on that news. My mom is here with me, but she had to run out to the car to get a few more things. We have my hospital bag, my diaper bag, and I also brought my tote bag with um, just all of my chargers and things like that. I have my frozen colostrum back there and a Trader Joe's bag full of snacks. Here's the bed where my mom is going to be sleeping. I brought my pillow and my pregnancy pillow and just everything that I needed to be like as comfortable as possible. So I am going to be here through the night. Um, I am very, very tired already. It's like 11 o'clock. Um, just waiting to hear what the doctor wants to do as far as first steps. And then I'll most likely be just through the night with um, whatever drug they end up doing to try to get labor induced here. So I'm trying to stay as positive as possible. It's a little bit scary because this is not how I expected things to go but I'm trying to stay positive, optimistic, that's very important for labor, and just thinking about the fact that I'll be holding baby boy in my arms very soon. So I'm gonna try to film here and there whenever I can. Um, while we're here, it could end up being a few days, we don't really know, but I'll try to update the vlog here and there as we go through this birthing process. Okay, here is my breakfast, scrambled eggs and potatoes. My mom went and got me a vanilla latte from downstairs and we brought these Trader Joe's chocolate croissants. I'm about to have my breakfast. So it is now about 10.30 a.m. Had my breakfast, my mom's taking her shower now. I will be able to take a shower at around 4 p.m. tonight after um, my Cervidil comes out. Um, but basically I had a night from hell. Um, we checked in at 10 and I wasn't done with my check-in process or had Cervidil inserted until about 1 p.m. And then like literally within an hour, I was just about to fall asleep. Um, the doctors came in, like five nurses and my doctor came in and um, basically baby's heartbeat had dropped. So they had to like put an oxygen mask on me, put an IV fluid, like insert an IV fluid and take out the Cervidil so that 
that was like kind of scary. My mom slept through it because she had already fallen asleep. Um, and basically they had to wait about an hour for baby to get regulated again and then they reinserted the Cervidil and everything was fine the rest of the night. So it could have been the Cervidil because almost immediately it started making me have much stronger contractions or it could have been this like Bluetooth monitoring device that they put on my stomach that I thought would be better because I wouldn't have to like um, detach myself every time I needed to go to the bathroom, which is very often. Um, but it was actually kind of like very itchy and uncomfortable and baby was moving around a ton um, while I had it on. So could have been that, could have been Cervidil, hard to say, but thankfully after they waited like about an hour um, for him to be regulated again, the rest of the night was okay. Just kind of more painful contractions. It was very hard to sleep because they came in several times throughout the night to check on me and um, no dilation anytime that they checked. So we'll see at 4 p.m. today if I'm dilated or not and then figure out where to go from there. So we're just gonna try to take it easy, maybe take some naps, do some um, movements on my pregnancy ball, that kind of thing and just hoping for the best and for no more scary situations like last night. wanted to do a quick update to the birth vlog. I think the last time I vlogged was to let you guys know that we were going to take the Cervidil out at four and then check to see how dilated I was. And um, when we did that, I was actually dilated to one centimeter, which isn't very much, but that's definitely progress because I wasn't dilated at all before then. Um, and then I was able to take a shower and I think I'd been, the Cervidil had been out for maybe almost an hour or two. And then my contractions had at that point started to get very painful and they were all of a sudden like back to back, like within minutes of each other. And so then, um, all the nurses came in because baby had another, um, like drop basically. So, um, because of that, my doctor chose to not take the next step that we were going to do, which was going to be Cytotec. Um, and instead I've been resting. I have had some, so I was hooked to like an IV again. Then I was able to have dinner and now we're waiting about an hour and we're going to try to insert a Foley bulb, which we may or may not be able to do at one centimeters, fingers crossed. And then basically because this was the second dip that baby had, it's kind of like a three strikes you're out kind of thing. So if there's one more thing, then we will probably have to do a C-section. So I'm hoping for the best. Sorry, my hands are kind of shaky from the, um, they had to give me like a shot that would stop the contractions, like slow them down. So that kind of made me a little bit shaky, but um, so hoping for the best. That's the update for now. And um, it's getting late now, so I probably won't do another update until tomorrow, but we are hoping and praying for the best. Okay, so I wanted to do a quick yeah. update. Oh, it's so, so, do I need to... No, it's not I'm just talking to the camera. <laughs> um, so I wanted to do a quick update. Uh, basically, last night we ended up, I had the Foley bulb placed and had that through the night until it fell out like in the early morning, which that's um, perfectly normal. 
but I was in a lot of pain with contractions and I wanted to be able to get some sleep in anticipation of going into labor today. So I did have some pain medication, um, basically fentanyl, a low dose of it, and then that wasn't really enough. So I had to have two stronger doses and that kind of just helped me get some sleep through the night, just took the edge off a little bit. And then um, early into the morning, I guess baby's heartbeat was starting to drop quite a bit, just, just like here and there. Um, so it's kind of like a three strikes you're out type situation. I was already on strike two. I'm not sure if his heartbeat dropping, like you can hear his heartbeat right now. It's kind of loud on the monitor and it's strong, but it's just starting to drop um, because my placenta might be failing at this point. So we have to just see what the doctor thinks. Um, we are going to try to do an epidural, which I would need if I had to do a C-section anyway. So um, they'll probably come and do the epidural pretty soon. And then we'll just see from there whether or not I try to labor um, vaginally or if we have to do a C-section. So that is the update. I'm very tired at this point and um, you know, not quite how I thought my labor was going to go, but just staying positive because the ultimate goal is getting baby here safely. So I have the epidural now, definitely feeling a lot less pain. Um, my doctor checked to see if my water had broken. I don't think it had, but um, baby actually ended up going poop inside of me when he was stressed out. So I didn't really quite catch what was gonna happen, but I'm not sure if there's like a different procedure to be done because of that. Um, so we'll see. I'm waiting for my other doctor to get on shift and we're gonna do some Pitocin to try to get the contraction stronger. And um, apparently baby has a lot of hair, so that is cute. Um, yeah, so just hoping for the best for labor. That's a beautiful one. There. There. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I can't wait. See? That's my voice. Wilder. Say, gee. For the worse, um, it turns out that baby boy's head uh, was already like engaged in my pelvis and it was engaged wrong. So like his head was pointing down, which would have meant that it would have been harder to push him out. 
let alone the fact that my pelvis was clearly not big enough for him to go through, probably because they had me go to 41 weeks and at that point he was just too big. So very disappointing. We ended up having to do a c-section um which i had not planned for whatsoever i had done no research because i thought for sure i would be having a um, vaginal birth that was what i had researched and planned for um but that's not what ended up happening and it's been crazy since then because i had no idea what to expect um the c-section was very very scary very traumatic for me um, it wasn't super, uh, like it, to me, it was kind of painful, but you aren't really supposed to feel the pain. It's mainly just like pressure and uncomfortable and scary, but because I could feel everything that was going on, it just completely freaked me out. Um, my mom was there with me to like hold my hand and comfort me, but I ended up like convulsing and um, just from, I don't know, it was just so emotional, so traumatic. And, um, but, you know, within however many minutes, baby was born and I got to do a little bit of skin to skin with him, just like our faces together. That was kind of all we could do. Um, and I gave him like a bunch of kisses and just, um, which was nice. From there, we had to go to like a transitional place um, to do like some more tests on me and baby before they took us to our um, postpartum room, which I am in right now. Um, we have actually been here for, let's see, baby was born on Tuesday at um, midnight, like 12.30. And I don't even know what day it is today, but I think we've been here at least two and a half days and I have not had the chance to update the vlog. I've taken some clips here and there, but um, just between all of the nurses coming to visit me to check on my incision, to give me medicine, to um, ask for like paperwork I need to fill out, between that and meal times and also so I guess I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit. So the night that we got here, um, there was a nurse here. So we ended up getting really no sleep that night at all because there was a nurse um, trying to help us with baby boy because his blood sugar was actually too, um, too low, which is kind of common for, <sighs> it's common because, why was it common? I don't think it's common exactly because he was a c-section baby but um oh that's what it was okay so they gave me this shot in my arm twice to try to make my contractions stop and whatever that drug was it can lead to low blood sugar in the baby which i did not know but i guess it was like an emergency that they had to give it to me uh, i really do wish they would have said though and um also because he had most likely swallowed um, the amniotic fluid that had some of his poop in it. They were also worried about that. So after he tested low blood sugar a few times, um, which I didn't, I, I was so out of it that I didn't even really know what was going on. Like I wasn't even registering really. I was just trying to breastfeed and she kept checking his sugar and all of that. And so in the morning they checked it one more time and he was had too low of blood sugar. So they had to take him to the um, NICU a few hours later. So that's where he's been since. And I've been having to go down there to do feedings every three hours, which I really want to be able to breastfeed. So that's not really great because you wanna be able to feed them like every two hour, two to three hours and just whenever they're showing hunger cues, which could be every hour, it depends on your baby. And that's what really keeps like your milk coming in. And so only being able to see him like every three hours um, is not great. Even though when I go down there, I'm there for at least an hour. So 
I do quite a bit of breastfeeding in that time and then I've been trying to pump in between but like I said it's so hard to do all of this I was running on like three days of no sleep um between just all the nurses his schedule trying to squeeze in like meals trying to squeeze in little naps here and there I've been in so much pain I had no idea everything that came with um postpartum for a, a c-section so it has just been oh it's been so crazy i definitely had like a complete breakdown um when i found out that he had to go to the NICU just after everything i've been through with um not having my partner for the rest of my pregnancy due to that unfortunate situation and then basically doing everything possible to have like a perfect pregnancy uh, not perfect but just what I felt was everything that I could do to make sure that I would end up having a good pregnancy and hopefully a good labor and delivery yeah. only for it to end up in a miscarriage uh, not a miscarriage um sorry guys I'm so out of it um c-section and then for him to end up in the NICU was just too much but um he is doing so much better um he may be able to be released to us tonight at 11 p.m so right now i actually need to eat some lunch because it's really important to eat um in order to do to produce breast milk gonna eat um try to pump another clos uh clostrum syringe for him that's what he's been like eating in between and um so thank goodness that i saved my colostrum i cannot recommend that more if any of you are watching this and you're pregnant try to collect your colostrum and i didn't even collect enough i had 37 syringes probably should have aimed for the full 50 that i ordered in my um syringes pack had 50 of them i wish i had done all 50 because honestly then i wouldn't be so stressed out right now um, cause then I would still have had plenty, but you don't know what you don't know. Thank goodness I at least saved up what I had. So anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I need to get to the things I need to do. Um, but yeah, that is just a little vlog update on my birth story. <laughs> So my family was super kind and thoughtful and got these flowers for me and baby boy and cards and my parents got these cute little teddies for him. So this bouquet here is from my brother and his wife and their son Brio. Very pretty, very unique. This one is from my parents super pretty too and this one is from my sister very simple yet very pretty bouquet so this is so nice to be able to look at and to cheer me up while i am here in my postpartum recovery room my mom has been staying with me too so she kind of set up this cute little display so that i could see them shoot some photos, some um, like postpartum type photos in the hospital that you would like typically get. Mine of course were a little bit different um, because we ended up having to do a c-section and we are in postpartum recovery. Um, mom is holding baby sage right now so I can quickly film this. 
I think it's been a day or two before since I've done an update. Um, it's just been kind of craziness over here. I was pretty much just pumping, going down to see baby Sage in the NICU. And um, between that and all of like the visits from all the doctors and lactation consultants and um, taking my meds and all of that kind of stuff, I really had almost no time um, for pretty much anything. And I was really focusing on Sage and making sure that he was getting all of the colostrum that he needed. And thankfully he was released to me yesterday morning and he has been doing it great since then. He's healthy now, his blood sugar is good um, and all of that. They've checked him several times for jaundice and all of those things. And he is basically medically cleared to go home. So am I. We have some like things we have to check off before we can go home. So hopefully we'll be heading home tonight. And um, yeah, so everything ended up positively with baby boy being healthy. I'm gonna have quite a bit of recovering to do still, but so glad that he is back with me and that we'll be able to go home. It has been almost a week. I am exhausted. This is the first time I've put makeup on in a week just so that we could get those photos because I really wanted them for the memories, but I am ready to take baby boy home. Baby boy Sage is ready to go home. So I thought I would do one last vlog. We are about to get checked out of the hospital. Um, my mom ran downstairs to get the car seat for baby Sage and we are going to run all of our stuff down there. I am exhausted because um, I didn't get any sleep last night. Baby boy Sage was released to me from NICU this morning. Oh wow, just noted this, this big old pasta. Um, we had lasagna and garlic bread, so there was like some garlic on my lip. But um, he got released to me yesterday morning and he did pretty well all day. He wasn't too, too fussy, but babies are actually a lot less fussy during the day and then during the night a little bit of a different story so that was the case here and then he had to be checked like every couple of hours and I also have to be checked every certain amount of hours and given more meds and all of that kind of thing so it was a very long sleepless night I probably got like 45 minutes of sleep and it's probably gonna be another sleepless night tonight but that is to be expected during this newborn phase and I was prepared for it and I think I did a pretty good job of taking care of baby Sage and just hoping for the best these next couple of days. It has been such a difficult time here for me. I have had some kind of just like emotional um, moments when I'm trying to like fall asleep and stuff like that. Hopefully that'll be better once we're home. And of course, now that I have baby boy, I'm back with. Hey.